episode of Self Helpless is brought to you by Zola. Zola is reinventing the wedding registry and planning process to make the happiest moment in a couple's life even happier. To start your free wedding website and also get $50 off your registry on Zola, go to zola.com slash helpless. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Self Helpless. I'm Kelsey Cook. I'm Taylor Tomlinson. I'm Delaney Fisher. And today we're going to be talking about the four-hour work week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited about this one. Good stuff in this book. I think it can, uh, it applies to everybody. Everybody can work smarter, not harder in in their personal lives or professional lives. For sure. Um, Also, we had our two-year anniversary recently of Self Helpless. So crazy. Two years? Two years, dude. Our baby is two. Our last episode. Uh, it was our two year anniversary mm-hmm. with the lovely Shay. Yeah. What a oh man. What a dream. I loved that episode. Not our last, like our previous episode. It's not ending. I feel yes. like that sounded like it was like our oh, last yeah. episode. Previous. <laughs> this was always meant to burn out in yeah. two years. You knew that. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, so much has changed in two years. I know. I, know. I can't believe it's been two years because that means it's been like two and a half since the three of us started collaborating. Mm-hmm. I'm like, do we want to really quick just go in a circle and talk about like the biggest changes that have happened oh, in I mean, our lives? Real I was quick? in like <laughs> a very toxic relationship and now I'm engaged. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Stupid. Like when you think about. Well, when we first all started working together, I was yeah. like very actively trying to be single for a while. Mm-hmm. And then I was back in that thing. And just like, that's the biggest transformation for me personally. And then, of course, our careers have gone through, you know, yeah, all kinds many of stages. Stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Biggest, yeah. Per- biggest personal one for me is I was uh, at my corporate job still. Mm-hmm. We used to record in the conference room at my corporate job. Yeah. Yes. Um, and now I work for myself from home, which is something that I always wanted and 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 strived for and and, and you know, eventually cracked that code with really the help of this podcast and you guys and all the support and all the things that we've learned. So that's probably my biggest like personal yeah. transformation. I feel like mine, I, I, my mind goes to my career and thinking about, there were definitely some low points I was going through toward the beginning of the podcast. Um, and now I, I like love the managers I have. And now I am a, like nationally touring headliner like yeah. that. And before I was opening for people and it feels really cool now to be like, Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. I, I get to be the person that people come see. It's pretty yeah. cool. So that's probably my biggest yeah. change, I think, from two years ago. Yeah. And yeah. just uh, the, the community that is growing because of the podcast is so cool to see. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we started with, what, 12 members in the Facebook group, and now yeah. it's in the thousands, and everybody's so awesome. And I don't know, I've just, I've learned so much from all of the episodes we've done with special guests and just hearing about you guys more Mm -hmm. Um, and just all the people that write in and just tell us about their experience or, you know, drop some knowledge on us. So I feel like I, I feel like a completely different person than I was two years ago. Yeah. Like same. I also feel like I'm more focused on being... I don't know if self-made is the right word, but just looking at what opportunities you can control and things that you can make yourself as opposed to, I feel like two years ago, I was still really focused on, okay, like I need all these external people to, to make shit happen for me. And I think once you start just looking at what you can do for yourself, that helps a lot. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is a good theme for uh, this book too. Oh, two years ago, I still had a really bad bagel habit. (laughs) And now you're a vegan. I'm a a vegan, which I still eat lots of bagels and cream cheese, but they're vegan. Uh (laughs) But uh, yeah, my food transformation is quite interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, okay. We also, we also, I mean, we've been talking about this a little bit, but we are doing a tour in 2020, Yes, which yes. is so exciting. And it's something that we've been talking about for a while. And we're going to be coming to the top five cities where we have the most helpsters. Yes. So we have, I, I can tell you guys right now tell us. where Give it us stands. The, data. <laughs> the top five cities are LA, New York, Chicago, Washington, DC, and Seattle slash Tacoma. 
Oh, so wow. So as of now, those are the top five most densely populated helpster areas. Yeah. Um, and then some ones that are kind of on the edge that are getting close are San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, like Bay Area, um, Dallas, Fort Worth, Boston, Philly. So those are kind of like wow. on the brink. Wow. Still disappointed in you, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you guys, you have so much control over if we come to your city or not because uh, you guys control the numbers for this. If you tell people to listen to the show, that number can spike exactly in your yeah. area. So, um, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah. Wow. So we're talking putting it together, you guys. Control. Keep keep huh? spreading. I said talking about things you can control. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Keep spreading the word about self-helpless and uh, grow that, that helpster army and we'll come to yes. you. We're so excited. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. We kick things off with a quote. Yes. Do Quite it. Quotable. This is from our helpster Chelsea. It's an Aristotle quote. It says, We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Ooh. Ooh mm-hmm. oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. You aren't a- excellent occasionally. You must be excellent always. Oh, no gosh. pressure. Oh, no gosh. pressure. Oh, God. I know. I'm, I tend to be excellent in uh, baby spurts. <laughs> Yeah, go right back to dude. That can be a little dangerous to tell perfectionists, but I do like yeah. the idea of that of like always trying your best. Habits yeah. are so hard. They are They're so hard to stick with. Mm-hmm. I have a really hard time with it. I'll do something really well for a few weeks, and then it all goes to shit. Once I like get really busy or stressed out, and it's like I know the stuff that I was doing would help with the stress, but I just don't do it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I struggle with that. <laughs> All right. Should we dive into the four hour work, work week? Let's do it. Okay. Do it. Should so. we um should we talk about uh Tim Ferriss, the yes. lovely man who wrote this book? Who yeah. also has an amazing podcast. Yeah. Uh, yes. Very big podcast. If yeah. you, you probably know what it is, but if you don't, you should yes. go is it check called it out. the Tim Ferriss show or yes. something? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in 2004, Tim Ferriss worked so much that he suffered burnout and was forced to take a break. Um, During this time off, he traveled around the world and realized that he could run a profitable business from wherever he was with minimal effort. That's pretty cool Mm because we talked so much about burnout on this podcast. Um, He developed the ideas present in the four hour work week while working 14 hour days at his sports nutrition supplement company, Brain Quicken. Wow. Huh. Mm. What a what a swing to go from fourteen hour days to a four hour work week. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Man, burnout really pushes you into reevaluating stuff. Like you It really what's does. What's that quote from one of the episodes in the past? Like if you don't take time for your wellness, you'll be forced to take time, time for, for your, your illness. illness. It's like eventually like you hit that wall and you have no choice but to change some stuff up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your body will make you slow down. Yeah. Because it you have to. Right. Yeah. So why should we learn the practices within the four hour work week? Uh, Do you want to work eight hours a day, five days a week until you're 70 and almost too old to enjoy your hard earned retirement? Or would you rather just work four hours a week from anywhere in the world and earn as much in a month as you do currently in a year? I mean, that's a dumb question. Obviously, (laughs) the second one. That sounds like the beginning of me getting into another pyramid scheme. I'm like, well, I want the second one. (laughs) Like. (laughs) <laughs> it is so true that like so many people work just like just to live and they're yeah. going, okay, well when I'm, you know, 70, I'll, I'll slow down and I'll take some time for me and I'll travel. And it's like, you travel now when you're going to yeah. bounce back quicker in your twenties and thirties, you know, wait till you're 70. Not yeah. all of us make it to 70. That's a privilege. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, I think this is where the, I think we've talked about it on a previous episode where I believe Tim Ferriss, um, in the, the first part of his book was talking about how we should basically try to live like we're retired now yes. instead of waiting. Right. So like, how can you incorporate that day to day now, um, instead of, yeah, working for 50 years straight and then maybe hopefully getting there. Um, which so tough. I mean, easier said than done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause there's no guarantees. Yeah. And again, like a, a lot of these tips, they, they might apply to you more if you're an entrepreneur or if you have a, a day job where there's some flexibility or something, but I think it's just all really good stuff that we can try to apply to ourselves in some, some manner. Yeah. Even if at the end of this episode, you're like, Oh, I can apply th- like three minutes of something they said. Yeah. Then, hey, that's 
three minutes better in your life, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Um, so the new rich versus the old rich. This is a concept that, that Tim talks about. So the author talks about the differences uh, between typical traditional structure of earning a living versus a new structure focused on independence and mobility. So the new rich uh, is a subculture characterized by mobility and financial freedom. The new rich aren't limited by their work. Uh, so they might develop their own product, they're entrepreneurial. So that's the new rich. The old rich are often tied to specific locations uh, or property. The issues with the old rich structures of earning a living uh, causes people to defer their dreams and happiness. People who postpone life instead of living life today, they work themselves to the bone to put aside money for a far off tomorrow. Oh, that's, yeah. that's yeah. tough when you're just like stacking away money like, OK, in 30 years, I'll, I'll oh, benefit God. from this. I'll go on that, that Disney cruise. Right? I mean, that just feels like, <laughs> oh, man, there's no light at the end of the tunnel or the, the tunnel or the light is so far away. It, yeah. it can really get discouraged. Yeah. And then the new rich have completely different goals right different different means of earning a living they know that true wealth comes in more freedom and more time uh know that it's possible to have those things without a million dollar bank account flexibility and mobility are crucial to a life of luxury and you can't have either with the standard 40 hour work week hey i would agree with that yeah i yeah. mean i i see that in some of my friends who i think are definitely still tied more to that old rich idea of like but i have to have a retirement account and a 401k and when I started doing comedy they're like but what I mean how are you gonna wh where are you gonna get a 401k from and I'm like oh I'm not I'm just not thinking about that like mm -hmm. that's not something that I'm currently worried about and to them I was like what yeah right and I think a lot of people um still feel that way even if they're our age yeah and also you can you can invest whether you're you're working for a corporation or not like you can you can put money away you can invest properly so mm -hmm. it's it's things like when when I was leaving my day job I the fear of like but what about health insurance and mm -hmm. what you know and I'm right. like well uh, I'm going to try to see if um, Cam and I can become domestic partners. But if not, then I will have to go on uh, like a private, like individual plan, which will be very expensive. But that will become my new biggest expense every month. So yeah. everything else will have to shift a little bit in order for me to incorporate that. But I wasn't going to let it deter me from making that move. Yeah. Yeah, it's all possible. Um, so... If you guys want to get out of that, if you're feeling that way, first step, break from the old rich pattern, define your own rules and throw negative beliefs overboard. Uh, so number one, reject conventions of the traditional working world. Uh, instead of toiling away in an office, increase your independent value. Reduce hours spent working either in the office or independently by establishing specific priorities and maximizing your efficiency. And uh, Tim Ferriss describes the process of determining priorities and maximizing efficiency in these four steps, definition, elimination, automation, and liberation, which you're going to get into more specifically. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a lot of shuns. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Got to love it. So <laughs> definition, that means you're going to redefine retirement define your goals and redefine your work life. So just redefine the way you think about work in general. Yeah. Okay. So redefining retirement instead of this far off retirement, this light at the end of the tunnel that you can barely see switch to periods of intense work followed by brief mini retirements or vacations of two weeks to two months long. This is like, this oh. is like when you had friends who went to school districts that had like year round oh, school yeah. that oh. always seemed so awesome to me mm -hmm. they'd like go to school for two months and they'd have two months off and they go to school for two months oh, instead of like yeah. or maybe you'd go for two months so you'd be off for a month i never instead, heard of that you never heard of that mm -mm. yeah it's some schools do it and instead of like going for nine months and then you have two and a half off right. three four yeah summer you like get to take break. I thought that sounded so awesome. Yeah. And they're learning the same things. They're just doing it a little differently on a different schedule. It's different like the, schedule. the result is the same. Yeah. yeah. Just spread out differently. Right. Yeah. I really would love to adopt that. Kyle and I have talked about this a lot where, cause I mean, the three of us, we realize not everybody is in this position, but like if you do work for yourself or you're working towards that, like if you have the ability to take time off when you want, or you have a more flexible schedule, we should totally be doing this. Yeah. Like how amazing would that be? And how I, when I just think about how productive I would be 
for a month straight like i could i could really grind for a month if i knew that i had a month of nothing coming right definitely i agree the other side though it's tough like when you're working for yourself it's hard to just not work all the time true right and it's so it's like sometimes it can be easier if you have like a boss in like a nine to five situation we're like okay you have to go home now or you know there's it's just kind of easier to follow those rules if you're not the one setting them for yourself right so that can be really challenging how many sick days i've never had a real job how many (laughs) sick days do you get a year like two weeks um i think at my previous job was like yeah 10 maybe 10 sick days we got like two weeks paid vacation another two weeks paid during the holidays we had several personal days and we also had random, you know, like bereavement days or jury duty or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But that's really good. I was going to say that sounds generous to that's me. That's actually yeah. better than what most people get. I think wow. standard it's like 14 days paid vaca- or vacation. I don't even know yeah. if it's paid a lot of time, but usually. And then um, some a, a handful of sick days. Yeah, that's so, what my job in Seattle was. Yeah. So I was in a much better place than, than the average person with yeah. that. So it's tough. I mean, that's... That is tough because you got to save some for actual sick days. You can't yeah, just like it's divvy hard. up 20 yeah. days. Or it's like yeah. you run out of sick days and you call out sick, you don't get paid for the day. So you're just taking an unpaid sick right. day. So it's just... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you have tough. to really... And you know, not everybody's, again, working in jobs where I was talking to Kyle about this the other night because he used to work in accounting and he really hated it. And he was like, you were just staring at the clock all day because you had to be there from this time to this time. You got paid the same, no matter how much you got done. A lot of it didn't take as long as you had to Mm -hmm. do it. And so to be in a position where we're fortunate enough to like, we can decide when we're going to work and how much we're going to work. And like, if we call out sick, then you know we're the only ones who are affected most of the time it's not that big of a deal um but so i do want to just acknowledge people who don't have that ease but this this book is kind of more speaking to people who want to be entrepreneurs who want to work for themselves and how to maximize uh that that efficiency and work towards that and also if you're able to um set up something with your current job you know if you are in like the the eight to five or nine to five structure there's often ways where you can start slowly working from home and showing your boss that you're capable at home. And, and so yeah. Yeah. There, there are ways, and um, I, I think we'll, we'll be getting into this coming up here. This episode of Self Helpless is brought to you by Zola. Zola is reinventing the wedding registry and planning process to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. Zola is the easiest way to plan your wedding and register. You can join 500,000 couples who have used Zola. Uh, You can start with a free wedding website. It's so easy. It takes just minutes to set up. There's over 100 beautiful wedding website designs to choose from that fit any couple's style and every type of wedding. Then build your dream registry at Zola. The Zola store has the widest selection of gifts at all different price points. There's something for every guest to give. And obviously you guys know I'm getting married in a couple weeks. Zola is so awesome. Uh, it's really like a one-stop shop for yeah. everything you need. Yeah. To plan. I can't imagine doing all that without Zola. <laughs> I know. How do people, how, how do people, people survive do- before this? Yeah, I don't know, but it's, people it's used to make binders. <laughs> Oh, like scrapbooks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. So uh, we love Zola and can't wait for the wedding. Uh, to start your free wedding website and also get $50 off your registry, go to zola.com slash helpless. That's zola.com slash helpless to start your free wedding website and get $50 off your registry on Zola. Now back to the show. Yeah, I had a roommate um, a couple years ago who worked in like... I forget what she did it or something. And she started working from home more and she's like, I get just as much done here. Like, cause with the internet and with computers, yeah, you don't need to be in an office necessarily anymore. So yeah, Delaney is absolutely right. Especially if you've been at a job for a while and you do a great job. Yeah. Just ask. Yeah. And that's, that's how I transitioned out, which, yeah. you know, we'll get, we'll get into. But, yeah. Um, so yeah. redefine retirement, redefine your goals. So do that by setting big goals. So few people dare to think big or unique. So the playing field is more sparse for those going after big dreams. I think that's interesting. I think mm. that's true. People I agree. People are too scared mm-hmm. to right. go for it. So if you decide to go for it, you're like, oh, but so many people are going for it. No, a lot of people are scared. Yeah. You're so right. I think that like the the freeway to your dream is probably a little bit more open than you would yeah. think. There's not as much traffic on that <laughs> yeah. on that road. Even with us who 
I mean, we do what we love for a living. That already, I think, is a smaller percentage of people. But even within that, there are times where I find myself being afraid to actually vocalize what I want if it's a really big dream because I'm like, oh, I just don't want, like, I don't want to feel stupid if I don't get it or yeah. who am I kidding? You know, that sort of imposter syndrome. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, and Tim does address the nine to five office job thing. So if you are working in an office nine to five, he suggests that you rethink productivity and the eight hour workday using the Pareto principle and Parkinson's law. So the Pareto principle in the late 19th century Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto, what a name, uh, that is Solid. that is a pasta sauce. Yeah. Uh, he, Pareto noticed that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the population. So this population also owned about 80% of the country's wealth. Well, Interesting. Up. And the Pareto principle and the eight hour work day. So how that works is most people spend eight hours at work and most of this time is wasted just acting busy. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. that's exactly what I was talking about with Kyle's accounting job. Most people, you're there all day, but oh. you don't need to be there all day. So you just got to busy yourself. I mean, even working in like food service, which is the only real hard labor I've ever done. Uh, a lot of it was just like, what else can I clean again? Yeah. Like you don't yeah. really. Dude, even I would go into work and get the bulk of my stuff done in like two and a half hours. And then the rest of the day was just like answering phone calls that could have been automated with an operator, oh, you know? And I'm yeah. just like, what is happening here? And now working working from home, it's like, I will knock out my work in a few hours and then the rest of the day I can do other stuff and it still adds up to the same amount of money. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Which has got to be so frustrating so thinking back on all that time. You're like, oh my God, I could have been doing this all the time. Parkinson's law says that the more time you have to complete a task, the more time you'll spend on it. Oh, so true. God, that Damn is it. so true. That's so true. Oh my God, that hits home. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, my dad used to say when when I was in school, he was like, I was like, I'm just so busy, I'm so overwhelmed. He's like, it's better for you to be busy because you'll be more efficient. Like, because you'll only have, you know. 90 minutes to write this essay what and you're like time. oh i wish i had more time it's like it only takes you 90 minutes yeah you yeah just focus up fast yeah cam's doing this thing at his job that he gets like summer fridays which some companies do where you work half day uh friday in the summer mm-hmm. and mm, interesting how everybody gets the same amount of work done in those yeah. four hours instead of the, the eight hours of the you know, the rest of the year and it's like oh i want i'm i get to leave by noon today i gotta get all this done okay bye yeah. versus oh i have till 5 p.m so i'm just gonna watch cat videos for a while until i do this stuff it's true yeah yeah, yeah. I when hanging out a lot of the time when i started a, a comedy show in college it was a weekly stand-up show and the crowd was kind of the same every week like it was a lot of repeat people coming and so I had to write a new 10 minutes of material every week for like nine months and I would and I mean I'm sure was like a lot of it shit probably but (laughs) the fact that I I was in a situation that forced me to do that and I did whereas now I don't have that sort of weekly pressure yeah and it's hard to fake that pressure and try and make myself do it because you you ultimately know if like you don't really need to have a new 10 minutes every week but back then i think if there's um a need for you to do it your mind figures out a way to make it happen and just like get that work done yeah 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 and again like these are our experiences i know plenty of my friends who work non-stop from 8 a.m till 5 p.m with like no breaks definitely so there is plenty of that out there or you know 12 15 16 hour days too um we're just saying you know sometimes for i feel like for the average person this might be true yeah depending on the job working every minute of those eight hours yeah Yeah. so the new rich prioritize the 20 percent of tasks that will yield 80 percent of results and then complete these tasks in as little time as possible okay so you can take these five steps to decrease your time in the office number one increase your value to the company number two prove increased output when working remotely so work from home Uh like we said number three quantify the business benefit four propose a trial period and five expand the time you work remotely it's a lot of work yeah so it's like hey uh you go in hey i'm doing this this and this can i work from home one day a week yeah and see how it goes Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and then you prove to them oh they're getting a lot done over there things are fine i don't really notice a difference okay then maybe after a month or so hey do you mind if i do two times a week at home 
And then right. you kind of see if, if that's doable for you. And like, what's the argument against it? It's like, oh, you're this, you know, the same productivity. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of my friends have actually done this after like having a kid or something. Yeah. Um, like, oh, can I try this? And it, it, it works out. So it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, and what's the worst thing you can be told? No. No, things stay the same. Exactly. But then you never know uh, going forward looking for different jobs where that might be a possibility. So something to definitely consider. So the next process is elimination. Save time by going on an information diet and eliminate interruptions. Hmm. Oh, this can be so hard. I know. Like, I'm social like, social media. Oh, and I know. Yeah. I was like, ooh, I'm excited to hear this. Yeah, yeah. that sentence made me want to check my Instagram. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So narrow things down to the important tasks. Ask yourself, would I be happy if this task ends up being the only one I complete today? Mm. Uh, Don't engage with time wasters, such as unnecessary meetings. Instead of email, start with the most important tasks first, the first thing in the morning. Try to have the most important tasks for the day done by lunch. Um, no. we've kind of talked about how like by 3 PM you're basically half asleep. I don't know yeah. what episode that came yeah. out, in, but yeah, do the first, the, the kind of the things that you're avoiding first, the rest of the day becomes kind of a piece of cake. Uh, number two, being productive, um, entails self-discipline and controlling your environment. So the information diet concept, basically practice selective ignorance and only consume information that pertains to your work or well being. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll be honest. I I do. I'm a pretty decent at this during the day. But Are you in the evening? I obviously I just like watch all kinds of crazy TV. <laughs> but the things that I listen to as far as podcasts or this or this, they're always pertaining to something I'm trying to work on in mm. my personal life or my professional life. Yeah, and I think it's really helpful. Um, take a media fast. Don't read the news or surf the internet. <sighs> I don't, I don't watch the news anymore. Um, I just don't. Oh yeah, that's hard. I don't. I'll, I'll hear about things no matter what that are important, yeah. but all it does is depress me and yeah. makes me, you know, unproductive. Yeah. Being on social media is 100% my biggest downfall in terms of time wasted. Yeah. Like, and I've done, I've talked about it on here where there's times where if I really focus my energy, I can be good and put my phone down. But I know that that is my biggest vice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And when it comes to surfing the internet, I barely know how to work the internet. So I feel like I'm pretty good on that. Like yeah. I don't really surf much. Um, social media is definitely the thing that I will hang out on a little bit. Um, instead, have a well-informed coworker give you a five-minute briefing on world events, which they'll do anyway, whether you ask them to yeah. or not. Oh. So there you go. Cam is the ultimate like consumer. He watches everything. He reads everything. I hear about everything through him. It's quite nice. Um, <laughs> He's like your Alexa. He really is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Cam. laughs> What's happening in the world? Yeah. yeah. Cam, what the president say this week? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Don't start your day checking your email. This can waste time. Instead, read and respond to email twice a day, once in the afternoon and once in the evening. Oh, mm, um, that's smart. Yeah. Really? I got into a really good habit for a while. Like I said, I'm really bad at sticking to things where I was checking email at like 10 a.m. And then I wasn't checking it until two o'clock in the afternoon, twice a day. That was it. And it was great because See, yeah. I got stuff done before. And then I did the emails and, you know, some things had resolved itself by then and some didn't. Oh. And then at the, you know, towards the end of the day, I want to wrap up anything that I may have missed. And then that's it. The next morning I would check it at 10 a.m. Uh, it's great. It's, it's, it's not letting anybody else dictate how you're spending your day. Yeah. yeah. And it sets you up like, you know, when you first thing in the morning, if you're checking email, you are kind of in a reactive state of mind. Right. Yeah. Um, so and nobody's going to email you if they need an answer within an hour. Yeah. They'll call you, they'll text you, all that stuff. But again, maybe we should only be um, responding to text messages also like a couple times a day. So this is all, it's all really hard to incorporate, but it does work. I've tried it for spurts at a time and I'm trying to get better at it. Um, All right. So inform your friends, family, and coworkers about this new habit by setting up an auto response, explaining that you're limiting your time on email in order to be more productive and better serve them. So for example, we have an auto responder on self helpless podcast email. It is absolutely impossible for us to respond to everything um, or our producer on, you know, on our behalf to respond to everything. We get hundreds of emails per week. Yeah. Um, but the autoresponder tells you exactly what to expect depending on what you're reaching out for. 
It's really helpful. Back in the day when we started, I was responding to every email and it was taking like four hours a day. Yeah. I don't know how you you were doing that. We were so new and we were just so excited to even get messages that, uh, you know, I I was eating a lot of time and getting really into it and it wasn't productive for my health or my other work or anything. Yeah. Um, So think about how you can maybe apply that, that tool. Um, okay. Genuinely urgent requests can be conveyed in person or on the phone. Kind of yeah, like what you like, said, you, if somebody needs to reach you, they can call. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let small tasks accumulate on email and then deal with them all at once. Totally. It's such good advice. Like just, yeah. you know, the, the block scheduling are like a batch batch your work right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and sometimes we have we record two or three episodes of the podcast at a time because we know that you guys are going to be on tour and we won't be able to meet up anytime soon it's like batch your work basically but do it on a daily basis um all right but wait what is your product (laughs) Uh, look at the market you're most familiar with and brainstorm product ideas based on your findings so again anybody can start a business I now that I've done it, I know for a fact anybody can start uh, a business. I barely know how to work my phone, you guys, and uh, I, I was able to start a business. Um, and and it actually is a product based business. Now it's kind of turned into like more service based. But yeah. anyway, uh, so do you have an expertise? Do you have a side passion? Can these be scaled and automated? This is your product. Uh, yeah. Test the market before you make your product. There's only one way to know if your product is uh, successful. Uh, ask people if they want to buy it. Use automated means of selling your product. eBay or Etsy to see if there is interest in your product. Once you've collected enough interest, make it. Very um, cool. So again, even if you're if you're not making things by hand, if you're an expert in something, you could build an online course and sell that. You can offer one-on-one consultations with people. There's a lot of things that you can do. And a lot of people don't think they're an expert in something, but I promise everybody is. If you've achieved a result in your life that other people have asked you about uh, and you know how the process worked to get there, you're an expert in it. Yeah. Um, all right. So the next one is automation. Decouple the time you spend working from the money you make by establishing automated sources of income that can be maintained from anywhere in the world. Uh, so everyone involved should have the freedom to communicate independently with one another. You should give as much responsibility as possible to those you've entrusted. Don't require them to ask your approval. Uh, And then ask yourself, who should be doing the work? So number one, virtual assistants can be uh, contracted from anywhere. That's kind of a cool thought. Yeah. 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 Um, And if you're worried about the cost, remember that your time is money as well. Mm. I need to have that written out somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's true. I forget that. We had a talk about that this week where you're wondering if you should take a weekend. Mm -hmm. And I said, what would be more helpful? Yeah. The money or the time at home? Yeah. And uh, taking the money. Sometimes (laughs) it's the money. Sometimes it's the money. It, it, you know, it's very case by case, but uh, gosh, that's so right. I get sometimes a little stingy or uh, like fearful with financial things. I know when we were thinking about um, hiring a producer at first, I was like, oh, well, maybe maybe we can just keep running ourselves into the ground yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for the sake of like making a little more money on our own. But you're right. By us continuing to do everything on our own, that's preventing us from making money in other ways. Yes. Yeah. So, it, yeah. Well, yeah, when I think of like, the hourly rate I charge for a one-on-one consultation. Uh, that's like, you know, that's what I'm getting paid per hour. It does it make sense for me to spend four hours, uh, cooking Cam and I meals for that day or that week or whatever. Mm -hmm. When I break it down into the hour, like I could make more money working Mm -hmm. and I could pay a service to make the meals for us or I could, we could go pick it up and it's pre-made stuff like that where you think about how you can like automate your personal lives too, to just give you more time with your friends and family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Definitely. Yeah. I think that's really important. When I was really burnt out and um, trying to like work up the courage to cancel a lot of things I had, um, committed to pretty far in advance, I used to just ask myself, okay, how much money would I spend to stay home this weekend? Oh. And I would just go, okay, how much money are you going to make on this college gig? And I go, okay, you're going to make this much. Would you pay that much money just to stay home instead? Yeah. And if the answer was yes, I would. Mm. Uh, that's a very, that's very a, cool. Also a good process of elimination. Yeah. So the, the last step here is uh, liberation 
after you've undergone this process and reframing of your perspective of the working world, you should be on your way to liberation. You first define your goals in a more short term mind frame. You then develop habits of eliminating time waste and become more efficient with your time use. After finding your passion and testing product viability, you automated the means of production to develop a passive income. So, uh, you know, it's how much is your time worth? Time is the only resource none of us can ever get back. Mm -hmm. And it's constant. Right. And and you, you can you can make money back. Right. You can accumulate more things. But your time is the most precious. Yeah. You know, resource in your life. Definitely. So. Oof. it's it's quite interesting i've um i've had to do this in my own business now also and i'm you know kelsey and taylor i'm sure you guys have to do this too where you like if you look at like the top three things in your business that actually make you the most money you might have to write it out mm-hmm. um and you just pour your energy into those three things mm-hmm. and the other ones you know maybe somebody else can do them or maybe you just don't do them at all mm-hmm Um, and so like, but basically what moves in the needle forward in your life or in your business? And that's kind of stuff that you have to kind of sit with yourself and and write out if it's, if it's helpful to like write out all the tasks you do on a daily basis, whether it's professional or personal related and see what can you get rid of completely? Maybe social media. If you're just scrolling for two hours a day before lunch, maybe you get rid of that completely and you just have a chunk of time where you do that every day instead for 30 minutes or something. And, um, uh, what things can be done by other people. Can you ask somebody for help? Yeah. You, can you, can you hire somebody to clean your home? If you spend eight hours a month doing that on a Saturday, Mm -hmm. can you ask a spouse, Hey, do you mind doing the grocery shopping instead? I mean, just thinking of ways where you can kind of get back your time to do the stuff that you enjoy or the things that make you money. Yeah. Yeah. Time management. 100% the thing I need to work on the most. Is there something you guys feel like is your weakness in this or something that you could work on more? Oh God, I have so many. (laughs) I feel like, I feel like the idea of setting time, Delaney, you were talking about um, something before we started recording that I think. Oh yeah, dude, this is so good. So my therapist recently, shout out to betterhelp.com slash self helpless. Um, But I've been working with her for a while now and I just kind of told her like, I have a lot of anxiety still because I'm a relatively new entrepreneur and I just left my corporate job in, I don't know, December. So how long, how long has that been now? Six, six months? months, six months. I'm only six months deep into it. And so there's just like this like dull kind of low grade, just constant anxiety. And, uh, she basically said, okay, I want you to start scheduling worry appointments for yourself. So whether it's a daily worry appointment or a weekly worry appointment, you can't go longer than 15 minutes or else it can get, you know, a little much. And this is not, uh, she said, this is not for anybody with obsessive compulsive disorder. So don't do it (laughs) if you have that. Um, and so I've been giving myself like a daily worry appointment, usually around 3 p.m. Uh, that's when sh- stuff kind of sh- hits the fan for me yeah. a little bit, uh, <laughs> where I start to like, oh my God, is this going to last? Anyway, um, and so the first like chunk of my day I find is like relatively productive because as I start to worry, I think, oh, I can worry at three o'clock. So I just have to focus on this and then I can worry later. Mm-hmm. And that it might happen a hundred times throughout the day, but I have to just keep reminding myself, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to worry later at, at three o'clock. And then by the time three o'clock rolls around, I either have the appointment with myself to worry for 15 minutes and to catastrophize and yeah. be insane. Um, but a lot of the time, by the time it's three o'clock, I don't need the appointment because I'm feeling so good and I'm not mm-hmm. worried. And because I took so much action on the things that were worrying me, it has kind of relieved that anxiety. It doesn't happen every day, but um, yeah, so it, that that might be a tactic that somebody wants to try, whether it's weekly or monthly or daily. That's so interesting. Yeah. yeah what I do like you think it. would happen if you had that appointment first thing in the morning? Ooh. Um, I think... I think it might have the same effect depending on the person. Like if you, if you tend to like your worry hits you right when you wake up. Yeah. um, 
you know, maybe that is, that's when you should have it at like nine in the morning. So then you mm. got it out of the way and then the rest of your day is fine. I noticed that my, I feel pretty good when I wake up and my, my worrying happens in the afternoon. So I, I try to schedule it around that, but mm. I'm, I'm also open to like trying to see what it would yeah. happen, what would happen if it was first thing in the morning. I usually schedule mine at 2 AM and then I just <laughs> do it until I fall asleep. <laughs> Uh, until there I've Googled go. everything I can. Um, there have been a lot of earthquakes this month. You guys know about that? No, we don't. Um, well, I do. So I'm going to go buy water after this, but oh, it's fine. Man. I feel like it's kind of similar to like your candy drawer thing, Kels, where it's like you had the candy drawer growing up. You can go eat the candy whenever you want. Knowing yeah. it was there was really great. So like me knowing my worry appointment is there it helps me not worry in presently. Because you're yeah. giving yourself permission to. Yeah. You're not telling yourself you're not allowed to. Because exactly. then you're going to yeah, yeah. do it more. Yeah, you're not avoiding it worry more effectively you really and will. efficiently, efficiently. Yeah, exactly you, you know? got 15 minutes to worry you have to set an alarm too you have yeah. to set an alarm you can't you can't free ball it yeah 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 i think me doing morning pages that's my version of having a, an anxiety appointment yeah because yeah. mine is definitely the worst i my eyes open and i am flooded uh. that's like when it's worse for me everything hits me in the morning so huh. if i can sit down and just write it all out then yeah. it kind of helps me purge it before i go through the rest of my day but interesting i feel like i feel like if i did mine first in the morning i would probably do my worry appointment more often than if i have it in the afternoon because sometimes like i said by the by the afternoon hits i don't really want the appointment anymore Mm. so i think i would actually probably worry more if it was my first thing yeah Um, i think so too so i don't know it's it's it's, everybody's going to be different with this but it might be i've been finding it really helpful so i i recommend that little tip she gave me yeah Mm -hmm. i know that we talk about that we're all like glued to our phones too much but i will say anytime i've used the just the alarm on my phone to give my day more structure like you said delaney to only do it for 15 minutes yeah your anxiety appointment I can feel, I think my problem a lot of time is like, I let the morning stuff take too long. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, fuck, I have to get to this appointment or whatever. And then I'm rushing. So I've started to set an alarm for myself for each task. Like, okay, if I'm going to write morning pages, I have to do it within 20 minutes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I just set 20 minutes. And then when it's done, I move on. Because otherwise it's a little bit too much free form, yes. loosey goosey. <laughs> and I'd, I've learned I can't really trust myself. I need something with a little bit more structure, like setting an alarm. That's good. So you're basically like blocking out your day. That's what like setting alarms is a really good way to do it. Some people have like a chart, you know, it just depends on what works for you. I like the alarm thing too. Yeah. Um, All because for me, it's like my, my, I really have to get to the hardest task right in the morning or else it weighs on me the whole day. Yeah. And so I'll usually give myself like a chunk of two hours, like, all right, two hours before you can check your email, you have to just go straight to this task and I will use an alarm for that type of thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, two hour blocks might help, or maybe it's 30 minutes on 20 minutes off 30 minutes on. I mean, it's just see what works for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Very helpful. What yeah. to think about. Is anything, yeah. anything from, um, this book do you think that you can, um, that you'd like to apply to your daily routine or anything like right off the top of your head? Can you think of anything that um, you might be I just, using? I think the giving, I think for writing, I I need to be better about that because when I sit down to write, sometimes I think it's helpful to have as much time mm-hmm. as I need. But now that I'm thinking about, it, I'm like, oh, if I if I structured it where I'm like, you've an hour this hour to write. Yeah, I bet it would like, actually help. Yeah, there's an end in sight, and I can go, okay, well, let's just like write a bunch of shit, and I only have to do it for an hour. In the same way that like you know, going to work out, if you only have an hour, you're like, okay, I'm gonna work out really hard for an hour, and I'll yeah. be done in an hour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I definitely would like to start thinking about uh, maybe defining bigger goals for myself, just even mentally, I don't have to write it out, but just not being so afraid to even think about yeah. what big goals are. And um, I'm so down with the passive income. I love finding ways now to have more passive income coming in, um, that having an album come out was the first time I've really set something up like that, I guess, aside from the podcast too, right. but the more... 
um, like pass you can have of things just going directly to your bank account without you needing to do that much. It's so nice. Uh, that's, I mean, the beauty of doing an album is like you do it once and then it's just on Sirius and Pandora and you get a check every month. Right. That's amazing. So setting up passive income in that way, if you guys are able to find ways to do that in your life with whatever your job is, it's yeah. super helpful. Yeah. Selling an ebook or selling a training of some kind or anything like that. I think a big one for me is I don't want to get, I want to get out of the space where you're trading time for money, yeah. which is exactly what Kelsey was saying about the passive income. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, I, I left corporate because I don't want to work by the hour. I don't want to be char. I don't want to be given an hourly rate. Yeah. I want to put my, I want to wrap my value up in something yeah. that I can give to people. Um, and that's why I want to, uh, build this online course. Basically that's going to be like, okay, that'll be, a, a different type of exchange than an hourly rate situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Work so, smarter, not harder. Yeah. Work so. smarter, not harder. And uh, this thing, it's like, it's going to be so much work up top. But right. Once it's completed, then it'll, it'll kind of, you know, live in perpetuity and I'm sure I'll be updating it along the way. But um, yeah, anything that you can do in your own life to start thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really helpful. Mm hmm. All right, should we get into some segments yeah, before we wrap up it, here? Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. I have a hot shit, hot tip, good shit. Yeah. Hot shit. That's not a <laughs> I like thing. Hot, shit. hot, hot shit. shit. I don't even know what that would be. <laughs> uh, hot tip, good shit. Um, I have been having some like some weird hormonal stuff happening uh, since I turned 25. If anyone has any experience with this, tell me. Just the the birth control I've been on for years. I have never gotten a period and like in the last year I've gotten a few and I'm like, what's going on? And, uh, in addition to that, I've had like some like breast sensitivity and like, I've been getting these very like deep demonic breakouts <laughs> on my chin that, um, they don't happen that often, but I've never broken out this way ever. I've always mm, had very weird. like surface level breakouts. Yeah. And these have like a social security That's number. Ha- yes. And, like, these are, yeah. Oh, these <laughs> like these would not move during an earthquake. Um, these are in there. So I was like kind of, uh, you know, struggling with that this week and we were filming. So tune into what just happened uh, on Fox to see my zits because oh, um, it will be on two episodes and some people um, I bet you can't even see them. You oh, can. Yeah. You can. I saw the monitors. You can see them. They look oh. like moles covered up by a lot of makeup. Mm. Um, but if you know that there's it's there's it's because i don't have them most of the time and uh so i just was feeling i felt horrible all week and i was posting about it on instagram and i got some feedback from a few different people um about these like acne patches that are at just like cvs like when i first got sent them i thought like oh i'm gonna have to order them online um but they're like these these acne spot they're these little stickers these little round stickers um i got two different types there's one that's like this this like korean uh, brand or something and then there was like a clearacel version um that was like overnight and they go over the blemish and kind of like seal suffocate out. it yeah they like suffocate it <laughs> truly <Die. laughs> yeah they do it's like putting a pillow over the face of your pimple <laughs> and just watching it struggle <laughs> and in the morning you really see a difference and they go down a lot and i had no idea Weird. and the people who know about it are like this is such a game changer and if i had known about this as they were coming on yeah i think that would have helped a uh, lot because you can the feel them you know like oh, before yeah. anyone can see them you're like oh god something wicked this way comes something's and brewing yeah. yeah and if yeah. i had known that then it would have even been an issue but i didn't Mm. so they were just you know just little hobbit hills but uh yeah so if you it's weird because you can't even tell you're wearing i didn't know you were wearing them until you told me and i was like oh and they're like little see-through little see-through patches yeah they're really not even noticeable and these are bigger ones like there are smaller ones too so like you wear them out in public like it's really not a big deal huh the only thing is i'm allergic to adhesives and so i don't know if that would work for me they're not super i mean yeah you'd have to check yeah I just don't know what the thing is that's making them sticky. Is it like the, is it salicylic acid? Is it something that's an actual acne ingredient that's making it stick to it? Or is it like what's on a bandaid? Because then that would fuck my face up so much more. (laughs) Well, I realized I was allergic to band-aid adhesive with the mole thing. And 
these are not doing anything okay. like that. So these seem okay. But again, yeah, of course I would try it. I could, like yeah, try it. An ankle or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, my really uh, clogged pores on my ankle ah, always real just gross down your there. skin would react. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> so that's mine. What have you got, Kels? Um, my wedding is in... 10 days oh my god is it really days. from when this episode comes out yeah 10 oh my days gosh, that's insane it really comes out of nowhere like you're just feeling like oh i got this time i got this time like we're gonna get the details figured out as it gets closer and then all of a sudden you're like holy shit it's just there's so many things even if you try and make it as simple of a wedding as possible it's just you're planning a party for a large number of people and I don't do that I mean that's not a day-to-day thing for me is planning (laughs) a giant party so it's a lot it's a lot of uh moving pieces but we're really excited we have like some things planned I just I think it's gonna be really cool (gasps) yeah it's gonna be really fun how many people are gonna be there 60 oh that's so nice Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh that's wonderful yes you guys were making me laugh on the Facebook group, the You Helpsters, where you're like, okay, so like, how do I react when like we don't get an invitation to Taylor and Kelsey's wedding? Like, <laughs> how, what do we do about this? Do we oh, stalk so them? Do we show up? That's, that's, you guys are so funny. I think a lot of people voted uh, just assume that Delaney threw it away because she was being a, a minimalist, minimalist or something. So oh, what happens when, yeah, when we don't get the invitation? Yeah. So I, funny, dude. You guys make me laugh. Um, oh, I want to, yeah, I have I have good shit. Um, I met a Helpster yesterday. Yay! Oh, yeah. It was so cool. I know this is gonna the time is a little different because we're recording this anyway um this won't come out for a little bit but um yeah I went to lunch with my mom and um just wrapping up our our food and this lovely young woman comes up and says are you Delaney and I'm thinking that something has changed about the order like maybe they don't have the risotto I wanted or something I don't know I thought it was like food related yeah. right and I'm like yeah did you is there a dessert <laughs> uh, um, your mind is just like yeah. what can I yeah and she's like I'm uh she basically said I'm a I'm a helpster I love the podcast and I'm like oh my gosh this is so cool oh. and I and I gave her a hug and um yeah it was so it's so nice because you know you guys are me- are you are meeting people all the time with with yeah. shows and stuff, and I, I I get to meet people through my consulting and stuff, which is really cool. But it was nice to meet somebody in person, and then she was like, "That's your mom. I recognize her too." Oh, holy <laughs> shit! Yeah, because of my comedy special, Love It yeah. First Cousin. She knew that she that knew. was my mom, and um, it was yeah, it was just so so cool. So that was a really fun experience, and gave her a hug and took a picture and. <laughs> Um, yeah, told her to message me. Um, and then I have a defuck moment that I really grosses me out that Cam, I caught Cam doing recently. Oh my God. That, I feel like I'm going to throw dude, up already. Okay. So you guys, there's, if you have a dog, you might know about these like little Kong things. You know what the Kong toys oh, are? Yeah. You put peanut butter in it. Yeah, you put peanut butter in it. Right. And it, they, they like lick it for a while and it keeps them occupied and very happy right i'm really okay. scared so- <laughs> i'm just so scared because okay. you've already talked on the podcast about cam with hygiene things <laughs> and i'm just like i don't know what he's capable of a lot um this is actually gonna remind it reminded me a little bit of the blender situation with kane and the wooden <laughs> spoon okay, okay okay so oh my okay God. so i clean the kong like once a week right i'll soak it i'll clean it right it doesn't get too crazy because the guy licks it clean, not Cam. Right, freak. Yeah. Um, and so, <laughs> so when I fill the Kong, I take like a big scoop of peanut butter at, with a spoon and I, and I let it drip into the Kong because I don't want to touch the Kong and then go back inside. Oh, the I peanut know butter, what's coming. Right. I know so what's I, coming. I let it drip and then I'll take, I'll, I'll flip the spoon over and I'll mash Use it, it with in the- with the other end of the spoon. There's no double dipping of any kind. <laughs> I caught Cam using a knife and he was going back and forth <gasps> in between the Kong and the peanut butter. Ew. And I was like, oh, what are you doing? That is the family peanut butter. That is not what, what? Oh. Oh, it's like, oh, you didn't know about it till now. Why is it a problem? <gasps> Oh my, oh my god. god, he didn't even he didn't even go, you're right, that's gross. Yeah, he, he was defending you know, he's himself. Like, he's like, it's not it's fine, it's not that gross. I'm like, that thing rolls around on the carpet. That is in Maverick's mouth. Sometimes he brings it and it touches his pee pad. What what are oh, you doing? That is so but he's gross. like, it's fine. It's, it, basically you haven't gotten sick yet, so why is it a problem? <gasps> and I'm like, oh my. Oh, not even like this is the first time I've done this. No. I'm like, oh, so you've been doing this for months. Like oh, I, that's I just so caught gross. you. So I'm like, oh my god, Cam. I, you, ha- please, 
either like do it without touching the peanut butter again or you know what let's get a separate peanut yeah, butter separate for Maverick yeah. and a separate one for us because I am never eating this shit again yeah ever so oh just, my god I, and, I, and I eat a lot of peanut butter so um, <gasps> yeah that was gross you guys you Ew. guys stop doing that I feel like no just no I feel boys are so gross boys are so why are you so gross boys are so gross why are you guys so gross Kane's not gross (laughs) Kane's actually like really lovely but yeah Kane's very he's very hygienic he's very clean no I don't you don't no Kyle's disgusting really Kyle's so gross I love you babe (laughs) he's not listening but no he's so gross I told you when we moved in I asked him to clean the tub after like five months of living there because i had been doing it yeah and he did such a shitty job and then he was like he was like that's the first time i've cleaned a tub i'm like oh god his old apartment was so disgusting like one day i came over we'd only been dating for a few months and one of the days i was just like i have to clean your kitchen like i just have to do it because it was so disgusting and he was like he's like taylor just let me do it i'm like no no, you have to let me do this now like it's just it's it's too too much yeah Yeah. i'm i'm losing my mind like (laughs) and he's what he likes to say he always says he goes my threshold for discomfort (laughs) is just a lot you know higher higher than yours and i said no 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 there should never be like uh, there's been a lot of training as we've yeah. lived together where I'm uh, like, yeah. if you start seeing like scum in the toilet, it's time to clean the toilet. Like I did teach him how to clean a toilet. Like I've had to teach oh. him how to just like, it's probably clean. time to clean our toilet. Sorry. Yeah. Taylor just used our no, toilet. No, no, it was Don't great. judge me. Uh, <laughs> he's great about doing the dishes, but that's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> like everything else you have to be kind of like spoon feeding. He's yeah, no, he's got, Dude. he's got some stuff. Dude. I, yeah. He's a boy. I, he's it's just so a boy. Weird. And I'm like, I don't know. Not all dudes are like that, so many of you are oh so many so many of my guy friends just do not give a shit like they, yeah like uh, yeah they would friggin lick the spoon after the peanut butter situation you know yeah. um, but Got like it. yeah i'm like cam just you know just at least don't let me see you do it then yeah <laughs> if you're doing anything <laughs> like this elsewhere in our lives i don't know yeah he's like, dreams are dreams are not a real thing like we shouldn't be really concerned about it I'm like yeah. oh that is so it's gross, just gross. Yeah. it's just the idea even if it doesn't ever like get me physically sick i just can't enjoy my my peanut butter sandwich now guys just don't think about any of those (laughs) things like anything like febreze after they (laughs) shit like they just don't even think about kyle made um kyle made like like ground beef for himself the other night which like i don't eat that and he doesn't really that much either because he's with me but and I've been like maybe don't eat red meat like it's the one thing and he was like I'm gonna make some and I got home and the apartment smelled so fucking bad like yeah. crazy and I came in and he had lit he had lit like a candle or two but I was just like babe are you kidding me I, I thought it had gone bad I was like do you feel sick like it smells rancid in here and he was just like oh I mean I was like did you not notice he's like I mean I opened the door for like 20 minutes he's like I just I guess because I was cooking in here I just didn't notice as much as you and I'm like it's horrible it's so oh, bad like oh. I opened all the windows I had like a fan on my desk it was so gross I felt like I was gonna throw up mm. it was oh. nasty yeah yeah cam's come a long way but sometimes i'll catch him doing something like that i'm like oh <laughs> does he wash his hands after he boobs oh god i hope so oh, you don't yeah. know that with confidence I, no i don't i really don't after don't. you told me that story he's like a woodsman like i ah! don't i don't know dude like I, <laughs> after you told me that story I, I would pray and hope that he does most of the time but i am n- i would not be surprised to find out that he does not a lot of the time yeah i had i mean there was once kyle i was like did you wash your hands he's like yeah and i was like we're out of soap in there and he goes well i rinsed them i'm like so you didn't yeah yeah, is what you're saying so you lied but then cam's (laughs) like cam's like i don't get sick have you noticed that like i just don't i hate that argument i hate that argument (laughs) you are infecting everybody around you just because you're a sewer rat doesn't mean everybody else's immune systems can handle that i mean like you don't get i don't get sick either like i rarely get sick yeah, but you're cleaner than him. I know, but like That's what? But I live jeans. with a, a dirty little man. So, oh my god, I don't know. And then that, I, I swear, do you guys watch Adam Ruins Everything? Have you watched yeah, all those episodes? I have watched where it. he just destroyed the whole hygiene concept and the really? soap is bullshit and all this is bullshit and oh. we're actually don't need any of it. Really? That stuck with me. I'm like, God damn it! Oh, I need to watch Cam that. Cam oh. was fucking right. I yeah. That's but nice. anyway, it just makes me feel better. Even if you don't really need it, it just makes me feel a little bit cleaner. Yeah. yeah yeah but historically speaking if you watch that episode where he just like ruins soap and all of the things and uh yeah it's all it's all fluff 
Oh man. Yeah. Okay, I gotta look that up now. Except like if you're uh, probably like a doctor needing to kill germs before surgery. That's yeah, that's important. not bullshit. Yeah. But like our everyday, like we don't need to be showering as frequently as we do, and we don't really need to be using soap, and we don't really wow. Like, uh, God damn it. Can't win. You just can't, can't win. win. So yeah, I live with a caveman. I, ah! I love him, but yeah. He's, he's a caveman. He's got some man. interesting habits. All right, when does this come out? So this comes out on Monday, July 1st. Um, I'm going to be headlining the American Comedy Company in San Diego, July 25th through the 27th. Super nice. excited for that. Such a great club. Um, I'm also going to be headlining the Longview Theater and the Everett Theater up in Washington State, uh, August 16th and 17th. Uh, I'm at like University of Indiana on August 23rd. I got a bunch of like random colleges and theaters coming up. So go to KelseyCook.com for uh, tour dates and get some tickets if you're in that area. Nice. And uh, I am in New York this week. If you're in New York, um, we'll see if I have any shows there, hopefully, uh, the first through fourth. Then uh, the 12th and 13th, I am in San Diego at the Comedy Palace. Uh, the 18th through 20th, I'm at the Des Moines Funny Bone. If you are in Dublin, Ireland, for some reason, I am at the Ivy Garden Comedy Festival, the 25th through 27th. Um, and... I believe, oh, if you're in Santa Barbara, August 2nd and 3rd, I'm going to be at Comedy Hideaway doing shows. So nice. Yeah. That's, my, that's my old stomping that's ground. That's your spot. Um, oh, and then, yeah, this uh, this cl- uh, week, Client of the Week highlight, I want to give a shout out to Mahogany, who is a very Ooh. talented screenwriter that um, I have the pleasure of consulting, and she's going to be making um, a move to Los Angeles. Oh my gosh, so sweet. I, and she's got such a great project that she's working on. It's, it's a brilliant idea for a pilot, so really proud of her and just uh you know keep keep it up looking forward to our next consult and yeah reach out to me if um delaney fisher at gmail.com you can email me directly if you want to know more about the kind of creative consulting that i'm offering and right now i'm offering one-on-one services which may or may not continue um indefinitely so get uh, it while you can get it while you can people yeah if you want Um, and make sure that you're subscribed to Self Helpless on iTunes give us a five star rating and review it helps so much takes so little of your time helps us a ton so cool All right, guys see you next time love you bye you guys we love you so much thank you for supporting Self Helpless you can follow us on social media on Instagram and Facebook at Self Helpless Podcast and you can visit selfhelplesspodcast.com for all things Self Helpless learn about Patreon and how to sign up our merch is there information about our Facebook group and how to join all the episodes you can listen to are on there a little bit about the show our individual sites are linked there and our contact information email and PO box if you want to send us some love letters and you can follow us individually as well I am at Del- Delaney Fisher on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and DelaneyFisher.com, where you can watch my docu-comedy special, Love at First Cousin, for free. And then DicksByDelaney.com if you want to buy some dick mugs. Sweet. I'm at Kelsey Cook Comedy on Instagram, at Kelsey Cook on Twitter, KelseyCook.com for all tour dates and merch. And my album, Savor It, is still available to buy on iTunes. And you can watch Wrists of Fury, my foosball web series that has an episode of Taylor and Delaney uh, on the All Things Comedy YouTube channel. And I am at Taylor Tomlinson on Twitter and Instagram and ttomcomedy.com for my Netflix special and all live tour dates. Sweet. We yeah. love you guys. So much. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>